You're nearing the end of your gardening season and you're probably thinking all of the important work is done. However, there's one thing I would urge you to do here at the end of the season. Right now is the most effective time to actually test your soil. And we're gonna go through what that soil testing process looks like and how to go about doing it in the fall season. So let's get into it. Soil testing comes in so many different shapes and sizes. There are little kind of pill pockets you break into vials. That method works wonderfully. It's a brand called Rappi Test. I have that test here. And then there's another brand out there called Hold All, and that is probably my favorite brand for soil testing if you want a really intense look at your soil conditions. And if you want to get even more in-depth information, you could check out a platform like Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that teaches you different skills. And they're offering one month free to those of you that click the link down below. Skillshare allows you to take courses done by vetted teachers and they will teach you everything from your new winter hobby from painting or filming all the way to more practical things like entrepreneurship or soil testing. Over the winter I'm going to be putting up some new Skillshare courses and that's because I will have more time on my hands but also because it's a great platform. At the end of every course there is a class project that you can then post to ask questions or interact with the teacher along with your other classmates. One of the courses that I have done over on Skillshare is actually on indoor gardening but I'll also be doing some on different soil testings you can do at home with very few limited supplies. So I encourage you to go check out that Skillshare course. The first thousand people to click that link down below get a one month free subscription to Skillshare. So whether you're looking for a new hobby or ways to level up in your career, Skillshare is the place to go. I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to soil testing. The reason why fall is such a great time to soil test actually comes down to several different reasons. But the main ones being that your nutrient uptake for the year has pretty much concluded and while there may be some small losses here during the winter months through mostly leaching in the spring meaning water solubilized nutrients being washed out of our soil profile what's left behind right now will mimic what you will see in the spring the second reason is spring is a really intense time i'm sure both experts and beginners would have realized this by this point and it's because you're transplanting seed starting soil prepping and oftentimes starting new garden beds or whatever the case is and you don't have a ton of time to test your soil and then research the appropriate method to reclaim or revitalize that soil and testing right now gives you an entire winter to look at those results and come up with a game plan for the spring. The third reason actually just comes down to logistics. When soil testing, we want to soil test the soil in the root zone, meaning we want to dig down to a depth where the roots are in contact with the soil. That's because that's where our, our plants take up their nutrients. If we test the top portion of the soil, we tend to have inflated results in the event of compost or manures being in place as well as that top layer not being pure soil. So when we dig down it allows us to test accordingly. In the springtime our soil may be still frozen when in the time frame where we have time to actually look at soil testing or in some cases if you're not totally familiar with where your roots sit in that bed because of a hard pan or recent tillage or some sort of amending you've done, it's really difficult to know where to test. And we can use our fall gardens to determine where our root biomass is sitting in bulk for the most part. And I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit. The next logistical reason why we would test in the fall is because soil tests are always best done on dry soil. And in the spring, the thaw of snow, the rain moisture that tends to come, we don't have dry soil. And so it's not uncommon for us to have to harvest the soil that we want to use in the test and then allow it to bake in the oven and or dry in some effect on our counter. 
And right now the soil is incredibly dry because we just came out of really hot August with the sun beating down and we've likely backed off on watering, which is completely normal and necessary when gardening to allow for a proper harvest to take place. And therefore you have the ideal soil material in your garden for testing. So let's look at how to harvest soil for your soil test that I know you're going to do because none of you are gonna let me down, right? Your garden probably looks something like this right now. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is find some bare soil space and remove all of your mulch. So step one, pulling that mulch back. Once you've exposed your soil, you're gonna feel kind of this loose layer. And this loose layer you're going to find particularly if you have um, leaves or mulch in place or you've added a compost manure layer. So what you're gonna do is you're actually going to go below that. And one of the best ways to know you've gone beyond that layer is to cut into your soil rather than using a shovel. So you guys have probably seen those uh, fancy hori hori knives before. That is what those are for. I don't know where mine is. I must be at the office, I would think. I can't find it right now. So we're gonna use a knife and all you're gonna do is cut into that soil surface and pull back. You don't need the fancy tools. And this uh, cutoff is gonna be much more obvious in a garden soil that's on the ground, like a, like an in-ground one. A raised bed, it's not gonna be as obvious, but we're still gonna do the process because it's gonna tell us where our root zones are. So continue downwards. I'll have to get a close up for you guys to really see this. But what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this leaf layer, leaf litter layer, LFH layer, um, technically in gardening and chernozemic soil, which is what this would technically be. It's not called an LFH, but I digress. For the sake of this video, we'll call it that. Um, so you're gonna see this really fluffy layer. My finger, when I push, it's fluff to about this layer. Below that, it is definitely more dense, more compacted, and we're in the zone where we need to be. Now, you're gonna continue cutting downward and scooping that soil out, exposing more and more of the soil until you hit the roots. Now, I'm seeing a lot of root hairs. I'm seeing a lot of uh, primary root. Right here is where I wanna take my sample from. You're gonna grab that sample out. Now, this is a little bit moist, so I am going to need to let this to dry out just a little bit. That's how you determine where you're taking your sample from. The drying process for your soil, uh, just I would do sun dried. You could do it in the oven um, and try to burn off as much organic material as possible, but I wouldn't. As long as you grab the soil from the right place and you're not gardening in straight compost or straight manure, you should be fine. Uh, if you're doing like the no dig gardens, that's like compost on top of cardboard, you really can't test this. It's not gonna be very accurate because the tests are meant to be used on mineral soil, not on soilless medium. So if you're doing a no dig, straight compost, you're technically gardening in uh, soilless, like you're not gardening in soil. So these tests won't work for you. There's actually no real test you could use. Um, you're kind of at the whim of what the packaging said, if you will. So if there's packaging. So next off, uh, you can let this dry out first or you can try to remove as much of that organic material as possible. Now organic material is root biomass and we want this because that means that we sourced the soil from the right area but we don't want to test with it in there. So we do want to remove that. Sticks, twigs, rocks, large um, large pieces of inorganic material, such as this rock, all need to go. And that's basically all you're going to do there. So I am going to let that dry out. If you guys want to see me use the Rappi test compared to the Holdall test, like a side-by-side, -side, let me know when I can do that. They do give slightly different results. Um, I find it's weird. Sometimes I find it's very different and then other times I find that they're 
the same. And I think it actually comes down to the soil type and how much time I took to separate out that organic material, if you will. If you want a video on how to get really accurate uh, soil testing results, let me know because that would actually involve me using an oven and burning off organic material. Sounds weird, sounds dangerous. It's not, but it's definitely something you need to do if you want really accurate results minus your organic material. And I find that organic material really runs interference uh, when you're using a garden soil where you've tilled in a lot of uh, manure and compost in recent times, but you've tilled in uh, manure or compost recently, usually within the last year or two, it does tend to throw tests a little bit. Even the ones that you send to labs, the labs will say, um, give you a percentage of organic material. And if it's really high, it's very confusing to the lab techs too. They, they will be like, oh wow, this is clearly from a garden because just natural soil or um, agricultural soil typically doesn't range over 5% or be between five and 10. It usually doesn't go any higher than 10 for sure. So they're probably confused by it if they don't, they're not used to dealing with garden soil. But ultimately speaking, when it comes to soil testing, burning off of organic material gives you the best results. And in labs, how they get that percentage of organic material, when they tell you what your percentage of organic material is, it's because they've done that burn off process first before they even begun the test. Fun fact there. I hope this encouraged you guys to actually go out and do some soil testing for your fall gardens. I'm gonna let this dry out. If you don't wanna see a video or you don't get enough comments on the video, I will still post on Instagram what the soil test uh, results look like, either in my story or as a reel. So ultimately, if you want to see it, I will post it somewhere, just whether or not you want it on YouTube. <laughs> Anyways, I wanna I want thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.